And now, a quick tune. All right, that was the thing from something. I'm, I'm not sure which, but <laughs> we have. That's an original, believe it or not. That's an original, of course. Yeah. All right, my friends, welcome back to this special event here on the channel. As I always done in the past with these special events, this one is being recorded. I try to bring you uh, people maybe that you may not know or have seen before and bringing you some of the best of the best of what people do. In this case, as you can see, we have a sax player in case you didn't recognize the instrument. Eric DeFate is joining us uh, from Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, I'm in my virtual home here in Hawaii. I wish I was. Eric was just saying he was in Hawaii uh on tour with inkelbert humperdinck you want to relate that story real quick for our fans here yeah i've done a lot of shows with um pbs uh through the my music series we've done everything from patty labelle and temptations we've done about 20 of these shows all over the country and uh, i got a call uh, i guess it's been three years ago now to go to fly to honolulu and play a concert at, at the hawaii theater with inkelbert humperdinck and uh i guess he has some history with that with that particular theater, and it's a very historic place in Hawaii. And uh, so we stayed on Waikiki Beach, uh, but like I was telling Carmen, it was actually uh, it was during a Category 5 hurricane that we got flown out there. So um, I was thinking they'd divert me on the way. I'm thinking, well, you know, my wife is like, are you looking at the weather out there? I said, yeah, it doesn't look good, but if it's dangerous, you know, this, they'll just stop us in San Francisco or L.A. Sure enough, flew all the way to Honolulu, and... Um, I got to the airport and I look at the newspaper and it says nowhere to run, <laughs> which begs the question, why did you fly me in here? But um, so we were there for five yeah. days and uh, we were kind of they were boarding everything up and doing all the precautions and people were moving inland and all that kind of stuff. And but then finally, it just kind of fizzled out and uh, and we went and did the show and it ended up being really, really nice time. I um, this was. Um... 2019 christmas time around 2019 real real brief I'm, I'm on pbs flicking channels and then they're playing inglebert humperdinck in concert so the camera pounds it pants to the rear you know to the back i'm like there he is that's eric i know him you know actually way well, that's him you know anyway that's what i saw back then eric i was checking the bio um briefly maybe correct me if i'm wrong but i know you're a teacher at carnegie mellon in pittsburgh yeah. and yeah. i think you won a couple grammy awards for yeah. a session with nancy wilson yeah, we did. Um, Nancy Wilson has some Pittsburgh ties, and, and we did a, a short tour with her, which included um, um, an engagement on the Oprah Winfrey show. Um, Oprah had a Christmas music special, and it was a very was a strange group of people. It was Nancy Wilson, you know, jazz legend, Charlotte Church, the, uh, the opera singer, and Destiny's Child featuring Beyonce. So we're all in the studio at the same time. And um, shortly after that, we came back to Pittsburgh, and she did a series of concerts at Manchester Craftsman's Guild, which for those of you that don't know is a tremendous asset we have here in Pittsburgh. They, they bring in and record and document all the greatest living jazz musicians in the world. I've been privileged to be part of a lot of those shows. And they recorded um, an album with her uh, called RSVP, Rare Songs, Very Personal, it's called. And it won the best jazz vocal CD that year for the Grammys. And then two years later, recorded a second one. Um, and uh, that one also won a Grammy too. So. Uh, I have I have both of those hang on, hanging on my wall here in Pittsburgh. I always say it was a very impactful. The second Grammy really changed my life. I, I raised my private teaching rate by five dollars an hour. It was really groundbreaking <laughs> stuff. Two Grammy awards show off. No, just yeah. kidding, just kidding. It, it no, that's really yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah. The best part of it was being yeah. with her. I mean, she was being a bona fide jazz legend singer. That you yes, you know. I was just gonna say that. Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, look, this is the first time I've had a Grammy Award winner on the show. Fantastic. But uh, I bet that was a real treat. Yeah. Oh, it was just amazing. And, and you know, you know, you expect somebody like that to have an attitude. It was kind of like talking to like your aunt, kind of. She was just always so relaxed and and kind and generous with her time. And uh, yeah. we lost her a couple years ago, she, but she had mm -hmm. a fantastic career. She was really, in my opinion, one of the last ones of that classic era, of, you know, the, the last lineage of the Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughn kind of singer. You know, they just don't really make them like that anymore for some reason. But wonderful woman. Yeah, sounds like all part of the jazz family, right? Yeah, nice. Right. All right, enough talking. How about another little tune? Yeah, sure. So this is a, a snippet of a ballad that I wrote for... Um, my family album, uh, the Fade family album, 
Uh, everybody, there aren't many defades, I always say, but all of them are in music. So on this new CD, it's produced by Manchester Craftsman's Guild, MCG Jazz Label. And um, they, uh, they put, put it together for us. It was really wonderfully produced by Marty Ashby. And my nephew is on it, my daughter, my wife, my brother, and my father are all on the album. And some of it's small group, and some of it's uh, big band, most of it's original. So this, this one's called Tell Me Again. It's a ballad I wrote a couple years ago. And that's off the the Fade Family CD album. Yep. Yeah, okay. that's a brand new release. It's um, available on all the major platforms: Amazon, uh, iTunes. You can also get it directly from MCG Jazz uh, here. They're based here in Pittsburgh, but they're they all have a pretty far reach with that. They've uh, that label has has won nine Grammys as a oh, as wow. an organization. They advertise their subscription series. Okay. They, they post it and it's sold out, it's done. So you can check <laughs> so. out the album on Amazon, The Defade Family, that's D-E-F-A-D-E, -E, in case you're wondering. I wanted to mention also that uh, Eric also plays with my other good friend, Jimmy Z, out of Pittsburgh, part of the Jimmy Z Trio, and that's how I got to know Eric uh, some years ago. By the way, the uh, Jimmy Z Trio with Eric does a fantastic killer rendition of Route 66, absolute <laughs> killer solo. When he goes into the solo mode, the entire crowd just... That's my favorite, one of my favorite covers that uh, oh, Eric fine. does. I don't know if he could do that now real quick, but uh, it's... Um, well, I could play a little bit of the solo kind of section for it, kind of the feel of it. Can yeah. you do it real quick for us or for Why me? Not? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a soundtrack, so here's my soundtrack. Yay! <laughs> Should have a soundboard or something. Some of those Hawaiians to, to clap. Yeah, from my friends here from here on the beach in Honolulu. Right, I wish I was there. But uh, yeah, that's a quick rendition of Route 66. I've, I've posted little snippets on YouTube off my cell phone with the guys, Jimmy oh, yeah. and the guys. That's so really if, fun. I really love uh, playing there. Yeah. I love playing with, with, um, with those guys. It's always so much fun. The crowd's very nice and it's a very relaxed environment, you know. It's kind of yeah, ideal for, for a jazz if, setting. You know? If anybody watching is ever in the Pittsburgh area, just check out Jimmy Z Trio or Jimmy Z and the Eric Three. Uh, you know, sometimes they're called as they play around. Uh, so, so what are some of the places in Pittsburgh? I know one place is the Parkway Center Theater that, that you guys play, and where else? Par Parkway Lounge, uh, Parkway Lounge in the yeah. Keys Rocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've been really lucky to have uh, several dates at um, Con Alma, uh, which is a fantastic jazz club. There's one in, in Shady Side on Ellsworth. And there's also a new one downtown. They took advantage of um, of the the situation where all the, the downtown uh, spaces for lease became very inexpensive because some people were moving out of the city. That they, they, they saw the opportunity, and jumped on it. They got a very large, beautiful space right across from Heinz Hall downtown. So I was actually there last night with a, a singer named Stacia Abbott. And uh, so I'm there a couple times a month, and sometimes with my own group, sometimes the Latin jazz uh, group I play with called Salsamba Latin. And uh, that's been very good. Also, my wife and I play twice a month at a place called Chipino in the Strip District, which is I've really heard of it. Yeah, classic restaurant, cigar yeah. bar. Mm -hmm. Though that's separate. I, I was going to scare anybody away with the cigar bar thing. The cigar bar is separate from the rest of the dining room and, and bar area. 
So if that's not what you're into, you can certainly just sit down. And the menu is fantastic. And we play there on, uh, they have live music on Saturday nights. It's a great environment, really, you know, great drinks, great staff, nice, nice time. Yeah, I've, uh, the food there in Pittsburgh is great. And the, the, uh, one of the most famous, uh, successful um, jazz artists, George Benson, I believe, is from Pittsburgh, if I am uh, yeah, not mistaken. Right. Uh, there's been several. Yeah. You know, when I, uh, if I may take a moment to brag on Pittsburgh a little bit, uh, we take for granted here how many of the true bona fide greats have come from this town. Um, you know, you have, uh, of course, George Benson, Ray Brown, Stanley Turrentine, uh, Nancy Wilson, Lena Horn was here, um, Dakota Staten. Uh, Art Blakey, it's just like like the mm -hmm. Jazz Encyclopedia. Yeah. They're all from, and Billy Strayhorn, who was, of course, Duke Ellington's primary writer. Mm. You know, he wrote Take the A Train, and he wrote Chelsea mm. Bridge, and all those beautiful, um, he was uh, he was partners with with, um, with Ellington for years. As a matter of fact, several tunes that we originally thought were written by Ellington actually end up being have, having been written by, by Billy Strayhorn. Lush Life, he wrote, he lived in the Hill District here. So there's a amazing history and and there still is to this day it's just you know the, um, a couple years ago Dwayne Dolphin had a the great bassist here in Pittsburgh had a a song he called something in the water uh, <laughs> yeah really about it, you know yeah. just go to the north side any given week you're amazed what you see awesome yeah no no the history is there of course uh, George Benson I believe broke it big when I was in high school in 76 with the CD breezing yeah, not mistaken. That's right. So he took advantage of that Reason. kind of fusion yeah. crossover pop yes. thing. Mm -hmm. And but he was also he had some advantages too. He had a fantastic voice yeah. and and movie star good looks, you know. Yeah. Um, but so he made it really big. But what people don't realize about about George Benson is when he was 15 or 16 years old, he was one of the greatest bebop guitar players in the world. Mm. Like he was already had, had been through. So it wasn't like he was um, just a, just kind of a pop guy. He actually came up through the bebop tradition in, in Pittsburgh and knew all the standards and it was just a fantastic musician his whole life. Nice. Yeah, um, he's um, he's a legend. I believe he's semi-retired also in he Hawaii, is. I think. Yep. He okay. Is, yeah. Okay. And, you know, speaking of guitar players, you know, Joe Negri from Pittsburgh here from the Mr. Rogers show. Ah. He's widely regarded as... If Welcome to the show, neighborhood. You know, sure, I remember yeah. as a kid. Sure, you never, yeah. You would never know it, but he's regarded as one of the best jazz players ah. ever. Ah, small world. Yeah, awesome. Seriously. A lot yeah. of history in he's Pittsburgh. He's 96 years old now. God bless. All right. How about another uh, tune? Yeah, sure. Henry Which West, one's... Carmen? Uh, why don't you do another... Um, you pick another, maybe like an original, if you can do a, a short one or... Yeah, sure. <laughs> called soul searching ah good title a lot of yeah. us do that sometimes soul searching <laughs> off the yeah. defate family album now to be clear the album has a full orchestra or full band right it has uh yeah half of it has a, a small group uh like just uh, bass drums and piano and horn like uh, my father and i two horns ah. and then a good portion of, of the project has a full-size big band uh which is 17 people five saxes uh, 17 wow 17 yeah five five saxes four trombones five trumpets uh and rhythm section and my wife and daughter both sing they do a duet together on moon river which is really uh beautiful really beautiful yeah nice nice yeah how uh, you know when 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 you write original tunes how does it come to you like is it the classic cliche like in the shower or is it just you know random times you just jot something down real quick and go back to it later or is everything pre-packaged yeah, it's funny, you know, people, all, everybody has a different kind of approach to this. Um, yeah. For me, I kind of think about first the style of something that I want to write. And as far as the melody goes, I, I keep a notebook of a couple ideas that just kind of occur to me when I'm practicing or if I'm playing mm. it on a session or at a gig. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah I, I kind of like the way that sounds, so I'll just kind of document it. And then you kind of piece things together through a notebook of material. You know, I, I got this concept from a, a wonderful book called Effortless Mastery. 
where it said, you know, if you think you're going to sit down and write a masterpiece, it's not really going to happen. It won't even be a good song. You can't, you can't force that out of yourself. But if you take, keep track of all these little musical ideas you have throughout your, your everyday life, document them, and then eventually that'll, that'll eventually coalesce into a, to a composition that, that works. It's, it's, it's ran. Now, the reason why I asked, the, uh, there's a composer for the Halo games, Martin O'Donnell, Marty. And uh, I, I don't know if you know the Halo game. It's been around like 20 years for the Xbox. Yeah. All right. Well, he was hired back in 99, uh, and uh, he had not seen the game or read the script, but he was hired by Microsoft, I think the story goes, to write the theme music. Mm-hmm. You know, he was famous for the, uh, the theme for the Flintstones commercial, where the Flintstones kids, that, oh, was, yeah. that was him. Jingle, so, yeah. right, it was a jingle. Anyway, he says, well, I don't know what the game is about. Can you give me something? What am I writing? A theme or something? So the, the representative said, well, we want to in- introduce Halo to the world. It has to be ancient and mysterious. And Marty says, okay, now I got something to go by. Yeah, according right. to him, according to Marty, he was driving in this car. So what's ancient? Gregorian chants. Uh, follow? Yeah. And then he thought of the song by the Beatles yesterday. I'm like, how the heck do you could buy the Beatles? And he, according to him, he thought of, oh, and then the song yesterday, yesterday, all oh, my trouble, oh, 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 and that's how Halo thing was born. But he didn't force it. He just, it was in his car. It was in his mind. I think he went straight home and wrote it. It was on a right. Thursday. He got the orchestra that Monday and he presented it to the expo, music expo, whatever it was, the Tuesday. It was a two minute piece yeah. and the rest is history. And, and, uh, and landed it, yeah. He didn't for it just he, he was given a course like okay it has to be ancient and mysterious well chance yeah. you know anyway that's the story behind Halo you well, know it, it, it's yeah. interesting you know that's really a good story it, uh, even uh, in improvisation if you're in the studio with certain producers if you're doing a commercial or a certain album with a you know with a concept these producers many of them aren't really musicians so they'll say something to you like play something silky <laughs> you know and you got to you got to decipher what what exactly that's going to be i want this to sound think of the color blue you know it's okay you know i mean it's not but, really a theme like if i yeah. say eric i want something soft and romantic well that's a theme right right or, exactly yeah, yeah, it's amazing yeah. they have all these abstractions you have to kind of figure yeah. out what they want to do now but you know as far as writing music for soundtracks there's a good friend of mine here named vito de salvo and he had an italian band for years here in pittsburgh he was also an avid writer still is and uh, he wrote uh uh, two Tarantellas uh, 30 years ago when he had his band and he cataloged them, put them up on a service and um, a producer found them and it was a producer of that movie called Eat, Love, Pray that came out about 10 years ago, Julia Roberts. Vaguely were. remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, okay. Pray. Yeah, yeah. And I think they're in India, then they're, then they're in Italy and were, his Tarantellas played for a 20 minute segment in Italy. So, I mean, I like Tarantella, you know, da, 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 da. I like Tarantella's, but, but 20 minutes. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, yeah. cool. And so um, he made it just a killing. Because, Interesting. Yeah, it, just, it was a major motion picture. Right. His music was on it, and, you know, you get paid a lot if it's on for 10 seconds. Imagine a 20-minute segment, you know. That's a long time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Eric, do you have your flute ready? Can you do something with the flute? Or? Yeah, sure. Awesome. So for those of you that might not know, for some reason, saxophone players are supposed to play every other instrument, too. I'm not sure why that is. Oh, really? I... Yeah, if, you're, if you're a trumpet player, you're, you, know, you, have no. a, you have your trumpet, trombone player, you, know, you, have, you have a trombone, maybe a couple of mutes in your bag. Okay. For some reason, you know, when you play, I used to do like uh, Broadway-style pitch shows, the Benedim, and I'll, you know, I have flute, clarinet, yeah. piccolo, sometimes oboe, bassoon, bass, clarinet. I, I'm not sure why that is exactly, but... Of all the ones I've kind of narrowed it down, I'm primarily um, tenor, soprano, saxophone, and, and flute. So that's kind of my, my main doubles now. I still play a little bit of clarinet, but uh, it's not my preference. Soprano sax. So, for example, just for perspective, what does Kenny G play? What, what, what's his soprano. soprano. Oh, it soprano. is. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Why don't you play something? What song are you going to do for us? Uh... Uh, let's do, um, how about St. Thomas? Okay. okay. Of the island theme. Yes. soundtrack here you good for a 30 30 uh, degree day you know a little st yeah. thomas 
Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. See, spring isn't good enough. I want like winter and then just give me summer starting March the 1st. Give me the warm weather so I can go to the pool, ride right. my Schwinn bike. Just spring isn't yeah. good enough anymore, right? That's right. You know, That's so true. all right. Let's keep the music going. How about another uh, flutey thing? Um, yeah, you got it. Pick uh, one. Here's some uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim. Ah. Uh, this is a like a kind of a romantic soft. You said earlier this is uh, called um, How Insensitive. Ah. funny you mentioned joe being one of my favorite songs that remind me of the ocean it's called the wave of course oh, yeah. it's been done yeah. many times by contemporary jazz artists yeah. singers like frank sinatra i think d martin oh, you know yeah. but uh, i'm sure you've peep yeah um beautiful um song from i think he's from brazil right oh yeah okay. yeah he was uh the the uh the hero of brazilian music really There's okay been nobody like joe beam he he uh, wrote symphonic music and and film scores yeah. and dozens of uh, you know, books full of amazing material. Cool. And um, he was uh, def definitely a national hero of, of Brazil. Nice. Uh, really incredible. We're a girl from Ipanema, probably the ultimate. The girl from Ipanema. Yeah, if you could do a quick uh, The Wave, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you um i know you were on tour back in hawaii back are you on have any scheduling going on to go on tour like something like that or is that a random thing that happens when you're hired yeah those are usually um one-offs you know they, they ah. we for a while we were doing them a couple times a year in atlantic mm. city and in pittsburgh yeah did a few, a few shows in nashville as far as and i was on I was touring doing run outs with a singer named patrizio buone a couple years ago he yeah was, yeah yeah patrizio, yeah he was hitting it real big here for a while sure i remember and yeah. he had a pbs special so we ended up with him and we did yeah know, benedim size halls like yeah. concert halls in in 20 or 30 cities but um touring now isn't quite what it used to be and if, if there's a tour that goes out for a couple days i'm happy to do it but i don't want to be away from home now as long as i used to when i was with the tommy dorsey band uh, geez like 30 years ago now you know we were on the road 45 weeks of the year and, wow uh, you can't even really do that anymore it's too expensive to travel uh european travel i used to play some festivals over there in the summers right. that's kind of kind of hard now too because of the cost to get over there and everything yeah i was uh you know during the pandemic some of these bands were recording stuff like online and then piecing it all together like yeah. like like the doobie brothers uh i think yeah. hollow notes got seven songs into an album but they want to finish up in the studio for that sound you know but i guess yeah. everything or almost everything can be done online and just like you record your part he does his part and then it's put all together on a computer it's amazing huh yeah we did a lot of that i had learned how to do that for carnegie mellon because you uh -huh. still have to have some kind of output for your ensemble yeah. so i have a jazz orchestra there so nice I, I made a click track in my studio here at the house with um the rhythm section parts and then i send everybody their parts and a copy of the audio and they played along with it they yeah. send it to me then i mix it all together it takes hours and hours everybody's in their box you know and everybody's playing right together. you know it's it's um to me 
Uh, look, I think it sounds great, but it's probably not quite the same sound as it is in a studio. There's always that, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that texture, the whatever you oh, want to sure. call it. It's not the same. Not that it sounds better in the studio, but it's, it's like different. And sometimes just doing it online is perfectly fine, you know. Yeah, so. there were some fantastic ones that came out of New York. Um, this one tenor player named Chad Lefkowitz Brown put one together. But all the guys that he got for the band had studios in their house so it was very it was mm. very it had a high-end sound to it but they already had cameras mounted they already did their okay own, i guess web casting and that kind of thing so they were already so they kind of had an advantage so they were all ready to go daryl yeah daryl hall is doing i think he still does live from daryl's house he was doing oh, really? it yeah it's he's been doing this since oh at least 10 years i think he oh, has wow. like musical guests come on from his i guess he has his own chef and all that his house i think yeah. it's a, like a new jersey or something huh. but it sounds great i mean it sounds like a live band it's almost like he's in the studio but it has like a different sound a different texture to it it's perfectly fine you know yeah, yeah. hall and else they were they were scheduled to come to pittsburgh two two years ago but then the pandemic happened that's right and then they had to cancel but the, i've seen them once in concert they are they are they, they sound great in concert yeah. they are they are truly there's nothing fake about hall and oats anyway yeah, that's good but yeah, it would be great to hear something new from Hall & Oates. So Hall & Oates, if you're watching this, we want more new music. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so back to Eric here. Let's finish up with another original, maybe, um, okay. if you want. Yeah, uh, which one you want to do? Oh, yeah, this is a, this is a, uh, an original by Eric Susoff that we put on the album called The Sideman Blues. <laughs> Know a classic song just popped in my mind from bb king i got the blues baby wasn't that him years ago oh, i think yeah. i got oh, the so anyway stuff, yeah. another legendary performer oh yeah but uh anyway eric this was fun let's do it again maybe uh next time maybe maybe you could have some back you, you said you got some tracks pre-recorded that you yeah, can might be I can play along with we, yeah um, i'd have to get some tracks of the originals you know right to kind of work that out but as far as like yeah. any kind of you know standard material or anything like that there's a lot of stuff that's available out there i could I okay could yeah maybe next time we can do something different but th this was pretty much an introduction for you you know for you guys something different here on the tech channel but of course technology is used to make music also so right. you know right. but if you guys are ever, ever in pittsburgh check out eric D eric de fade or the jimmy z trio uh you can check out the album on amazon and other spots like on itunes like it's all out there now or yep. you know oh, yeah okay so the um so the theme of, the, of that would it be, be called big band jazz or, or what kind of i i think they have a package as a, a collection of original jazz music both big band and, and small combo got it okay because there's all kind of just smooth jazz see, contemporary jazz and the genre would probably be uh, probably the heading would have to be big band jazz because that's what most of the downloads have been so far i think it probably i call it thing. i call it happy music dancing music big band you know the yeah. big orchestra and the big booming you know sax right. and all that so you know but uh eric why don't you take us out real quick for one last tune if if, okay. if i may ask yeah yeah no problem is called don't get around here anymore don't get around much anymore don't get around much anymore and i hope and i hope after you guys watch this we will be around some more next time anyway yeah, absolutely. how's that for a segue you know and i didn't even know it was coming i didn't know it was coming <laughs> so thanks eric for stopping by so you guys who watch this after i do some editing sometime uh, after this if you guys like it post them in the comments below if you want to hear more let me know you can catch eric in pittsburgh or if not uh, he I, I think you're usually on, on facebook right 
Yeah, yeah. I advertise most things on there, yeah. Okay, so check out Eric on Facebook and say hello if you like what you see in here. And I think I think you do, don't you? Yeah, you do. All right. Yeah, Eric, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. This was fun. So hopefully we'll do this again. So keep the music alive, everybody, and uh, stay safe out there. We'll catch you next time. Take right. care. Thanks a lot.